Well, what is up everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name's Louie, and today we are going to go through the economy of a game store. I'm gonna give you my best shot at showing you how this cycle works in at least my understanding of what we have accomplished at Game Grove with my LGS. Uh, and a lot of people like the, um, you know, the, the more businessy stuff. So I'm going to go through what I see as the economy of a game store and walk you through so you can make a decision. Is this for you or is this not for you? Well, we're going to look at how money flows and kind of all the different things. So, uh, first and foremost, the retail. You got three sections here that we are going to discuss. Uh, you've got retail, you've got online sales, and you've got events. And I'm not going to discuss the YouTube channel, which is another way uh, that my business is function, because this is going to be more just focusing on the economy of a natural game store. Though I do think if you're going to do this, you should also have a YouTube channel because it's a lot of fun. Um, all right. So First and foremost, the retail. This is kind of where it will all start, uh, and you need to decide, do you want to start it there, or do you want to just go online? But I'm going to show you why I think retail is actually important. The retail is your physical location, uh, and those come with some pros and cons. Let's get right into uh, the first thing, which is the con, and that is the overhead. Uh, uh, the overhead, and I'm going to write down uh, that overhead is going to cost you around $3,000 a month for rent and expenses that's you know your electricity your bills whatever this will change based on where you are in the world obviously um, but we're just throwing out random ideas for you uh, based on those things and then you're gonna also have employees and I wrote down there thirty six hundred dollars for two employees uh, that is roughly the cost of two full-time employees at twelve dollars an hour uh, you know that's kind of take or, or leave it wherever you want to be but if you're going to be open more you have to have employees so this is roughly your your cost of business your overhead before you even think about paying yourself we'll get into profit here at the end. But before you even get into paying yourself, you have to figure out how to make that amount of money, seven grand about, about seven grand. How do you make that amount of money to cover? And in order to do that, you're going to sell product. Okay. Now selling product is the, the epitome of why you have a store, right? That is the retail side is selling product, but you maybe, um, you know, know that like a murders at Carlisle Manor play booster box if you want a 25% profit margin uh, for murders at Carlisle Manor, you're going to have to be selling these at $150 a box. Uh, I'm going to use this at the, as the example to show 25% profit margin in order to get this, you know, this overhead covered and paid for, you're going to have to come up with $25,000 in sales in order to pay just for the overhead of your retail location. So that's a lot of murders at Carlisle Manor play booster boxes at very much over uh, current market price, but that's uh, that's what we got going. That's, that's the business of running an LGS, right? Am I right? Uh, so you've got the retail, you've got the thing, and this is really my goal. When I was like uh, debating, you know, moving the locations and, and growing, the question was, could I sell enough profit or should, could I sell enough product in order to uh, work out this overhead? And this is, I think, the biggest thing people miss about running an LGS and owning an LGS. If you can do this, it opens up the door to other things. And this is my philosophy and how I go across this and, and kind of my attitude towards owning a store is that selling the product isn't where my you know, profits going to come from. Uh, selling the product is here to cover the overhead of a retail location. That's kind of my attitude of owning a game store is that if I can sell enough product, if I can do enough sales in a month to cover the overhead, that's a big win for me. That That's kind of the goal. But you're also going to have breakage, right? And so this is a, this is a little bit of a, a bill. This was last month's breakage that I came up with off the top of my head. Now the computer, um, the only reason I really needed that computer is because the YouTube channel and, and editing videos and stuff like that. Uh, I also use it though for all of our online sales and whatever, but my computer broke. Shout out to Apple. They don't make good products anymore. Uh, we had to fix a chair. We had an HVAC issue. Uh, so that's all the th stuff too that you're going to have to add. Anything in red is an expense. Anything in green is obviously money that comes in. So you got to worry about that with the retail side. Now, the nice thing about the retail side um, is that it allows you to host events. And then in my opinion, it allows you to host events and to sell things online. I see this 
as a circle, okay? So uh, let's go, uh, let's see what's next. Uh, let's go with, um, with events. Let's go down here. If you host events because you have a retail location, you all of a sudden uh, are gonna have a couple things happen. Number one, uh, you're gonna have event fees, right? You're gonna have money coming into the store because of event fees. And now a lot of people think that you make money off of event fees, but you gotta remember that you're gonna have pricing, you're gonna have to advertise those events, and the more events that you run, the more employees that you need. So as this number grows, sorry, as this events grow, so do your number of employees. And that's something to, to understand. Uh, is that the more events that you run, the more employees that you need because you need to be able to actually run the events well. You're gonna have to advertise for it. So I kind of see events as a break even. That's kind of my opinion on events. I never try to make money off of events. I try to break even on events because if you do events, okay, this is where things get fun. If you do events, you have increase in sales. And really this number right here, 25,000, uh, your your sales number, you can't really increase. There's not a ton that you can do in this world to make people spend more money at your store. You can lower prices. You can do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, the people in your community have X amount of money to spend on cards. Uh, and you can increase your profit margin or decrease your profit margin. But this number of sales is going to be kind of up to wherever your area allows you to get to. But you can increase your sales if you create more customers and you get more customers by doing more events. But when you do more events, again, you need to add employees, you have to advertise and you have to pay out pricing. But you sell things like dragon shields, you sell things like sleeves, um, you sell things like snacks, shout out to Reese's. Uh, you sell lots of things as a result, but the win, this is the win, okay? The win of running events and increasing your customer base uh, and, you know, it's not the increased sales, although it may happen, uh, but it's actually trade-ins. And trade-ins are the bread and butter of this entire cycle, in my opinion. Uh, that when you run events, when you have a retail location, you're going to get cards. Now, these are just comments. These are, this is trash, okay? But at the end of the day, when you have more events and more pricing and more whatever, you have more customers... Um, this number, again, might not increase. Your product sold might not increase that much, but you will get trade-ins as people come into the store and hang out. And that is why the online store is so important. It is so important to have a way to move the things that come in with these trade-ins uh, because, again, you can't increase this number because your location, your area only has X amount of money. You can't increase. I can't make people in West Virginia more wealthy. Okay, I, I just can't do it. I can't make them have more money to spend on crappy play boosters uh, that nobody online even wants. Okay, I, I don't have that ability. But what I do have the ability is, is to sell things online. And if I can get trade-ins and if I can get the rotation going, that is a big Win. And so online is a whole nother avenue. You have a couple of other negatives, but if you look at how I look at things, and if you see the retail side as its own thing, you have employees that are working there and whatever, you can limit your expenses online to just fees and shipping. If your employees are already there and they are working on, on shipping and, and whatever, then you don't have to really increase this number. This number is just your fees, which is I much rather pay 15% in fees than a higher increase on increased overhead and that kind of stuff. Uh, but you do have fees, right? You have uh, you have the 15% um, for the TCG player fees, that kind of stuff, and then shipping. Shipping is not cheap, okay? We spend so much money on stamps and on postage labels. It's absolutely incredible how much money we spent to the United States post office last year. It's insane. Um, but because you're doing online, you have zero overhead and you have increased sales. Uh, and not only that, but anything you have sells. Everything sells. I just sold this, this, this ho-ho. Somebody from California bought this ho-ho off of my website uh, yesterday. Uh, it's crazy. And, and this probably would never have sold locally in store, but it was for sale on the retail side. And maybe somebody came up for it. But it was also online and everything sells online. It doesn't matter what you get. Everything sells online. There is somebody somewhere that will buy anything you have online. 
And so if you are working in this you know, cycle, it allows you to sell things that would not necessarily sell that you maybe got in a trade-in. This came in as a trade-in. Um, I wasn't afraid of buying it. Even though it was $225, I wasn't afraid of buying it because I know that everything sells online and I have an ecosystem that allows me to rotate in this in this way. Okay, um, So online is where the, the business is at. This is where the wins are at. This is where things, this is great because it generates things and it brings things and, and it, it creates a cycle, but you need this online component in order to successfully run a local store in 2024. That's my, that's my honest opinion. Now let's talk about a couple of things. When you get these cycles together, that's the explanation of each cycle. Oh, I forgot the drama. You got drama when you run events to other stores in the area, uh, people who, you know, you may or may not like in the store, they're going to show up. Um, there's going to be drama when you cause events. And this is one of the biggest things that, um, that you don't hear a lot about online. But as a store owner, this is the stuff that takes a lot of the energy away. That it's a negative of the retail side is the drama side. But anyway, um, let's go into what I want to talk about is new games, okay? So new games, Star Wars Unlimited, Sorcery. Uh, you've got Lorcana would come into this mix. New games are really, really good because they increase your profit margin. Because most of these new games, if you're selling at MSRP, uh, the profit margin is, is closer to the 35 to 40% range, which is really good. Um, and because they're a new game, you have less competition on the retail side. Um, and that's a really big win. And you have less competition on the online side. So that's a really big win. So your new games increase events because they bring new people into the store. They also increase your trade-ins because people don't want to necessarily spend $120 on a box, but they'll trade in their Magic the Gathering cards, uh, which produces the cycle of online. And so new games are really, really good at jump-starting a cycle like this. It's just a really good win. Whenever you have new games, it jump-starts the cycle. It brings new people into your store uh, that then you know buy things, which is good, but then also trade in things. It works both directions. It's like a little nice little flow. Then you also have a decrease in risk. When you have both of these interactions, the, the retail and the online, you have a decrease in risk, which allows you to buy more, okay? If you have a way of selling online and it doesn't scare you to be able to order more boxes of the new Pokemon set, because you know at the end of the day, you can sell them online. You have the, the infrastructure behind you to sell things online. If you can do that, you can lower your cost basis because you're buying more, which allows you to sell more product, which allows you to have more you know, people show up into your retail side and allows you to have something for your employees to do and, and be able to employ them you know, full time or whatever it is. It's this whole, you know, what I wanted you to get is this, it's a whole, it's a circle, okay? But now you're asking me this question, where does the profit come from? Because over here, you're, you're like, even at $25,000 in sales a month. Now, I have no clue what other stores do. I, have, I don't, honestly don't know if this number is my store. These numbers are a little bit different than my store. I have no clue. Uh, I don't know. Um, but if you have 25000 in sales and all that's going to your employees and to your rent, where does the profit come from? And this is where things get really, really interesting. You're going to get profit from online, but really... You get the profit from your diversification in your stuff. For instance, Star Wars Unlimited, right? There's only so much that my local store needed for events and for retail. And the, the profit comes from having a wide range of sales online. Same thing happened with sorcery, right? Same thing happens with magic. When you have magic trade-ins, we, we only need so much uh, of trade-ins. We, we only need so many uh, whisper spill cloaks. Uh, you only need so many of uh, commander staples. They Once they, your local community gets them, you go online, you sell, and that's where the win is. Lorcana, same thing. If you can get 100 boxes in your local community, only need 75, that's 25 boxes that wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have come here to support the local side and instead go online and into you know profit. Pokemon, and right now, it's just the opposite of profit. Uh, but you're starting to get what I'm saying. Hard work is the real key here, though. 
the more work you put into this, the more the, the structure flows, the more work you put into advertising, the more people that come to your events, the more trade-ins that come, the more profit that you see. The more, you know, I, I get it. Profit is interesting because some stores are going to make profit. Some stores are going to lose product. That might depend on where your location is, how many sales can come in. It also depends on how efficient you are at utilizing a circle like this so that your risk is mitigated. You've got new things coming in. And it, again, the win here, I think, is trade-ins. If you can increase your number of trade-ins that go here, uh, and I mean, trade-ins also, don't, don't forget, trade-ins also come here. Um, if you can increase the number of trade-ins because you're doing events and you're bringing people into the location, uh, that's where you start seeing some profit. But this will only happen. This only happens three years, maybe three years. That's, that's how long it's been for me, at least. This only happens after three years of hard work, after three years of working out how to ship things and sell things online, and after three years of diversification. That only happens, profit only happens after you put the time in and the energy to get the cycle going. And once the cycle is going, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty fun. But just remember, it's all hard work. That's my idea. Let me know what you think in the comment section about uh, the circle and the economy of a game store. What did I miss? Uh, what could we be doing differently? And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Have a great day. Remember to be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.